things are gonna start changing around here. King, there's a difference between a boot to the face and a pump kick. A boot to the face is a simple guy who comes running at you and put the boot up, bam, down he goes. Pump kick is when you actually run toward the guy and you do a jumping little kick and knock the guy down. Big difference, King. Start paying attention, phony. Hey phonies, remember me? Crazy Pretzel. I am officially making my return to YouTube. Not that I ever really truly went anywhere, although I guess it's been a couple months since I've done a video. But anyway, um, I'm back and I'm hopefully going to be back on a weekly basis giving you, I don't know, wrestling stuff, life stuff, things to rant about, you know, good old entertainment from Crazy Pretzel. Entertainment equals my thoughts. If my thoughts are entertaining, then this video won't be entertaining. Although I do occasionally add in some clips, but nowadays, whenever you try to be, you know, when you tr try to show clips, YouTube, like, fucking will hang you and, you know, flush you down a toilet and then throw you down a wishing well. And, like, if someone tries to make a wish, they have to throw in, like, mud to try to make it happen. It's it's, it's, it's pretty sick system. So, not too much I want to address, just, like, that I'm back. Um, just talk about a few things. Um, to, to the Zamario saying he's the greatest of all time. Well, if he is the greatest of all time, then I am the greatest American. So, Zamario, you're the greatest of all time, but I am the greatest American. If I can have that title, then I can respect you being the greatest of all time. I see my nemesis, Grumpy Cheeto, is still alive uh, when we had our battle, you know, over a year ago. I just didn't get the job done. You know, unfortunately, you know, we beat the heck out of each other so much, I was lucky to get up before him, so... I just came to the conclusion, you know, I'm going to bury him alive, and that will take care of him. I should have learned from, you know, The Undertaker how many times he was buried alive that it just doesn't work. Well, maybe next time we have a fight, which will probably be in the future because we don't really like each other that much, but um, maybe I'll put, like, an emergency contact on my cell phone number for, like, a cement company, and then if I have the thought to bury him alive, I'll have the cement truck come in and just dump cement on him. So maybe that might get rid of him. But then again, that WWE did the same thing with Paul Bear. Remember when he got buried in that concrete crypt or whatever back in, like, 2004? And then, like, he showed up with Kane, like, not too long ago, like, as his manager. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to rethink how to, you know, finish off Grumpy Cheeto once and for all. For some reason, if you bury somebody underground or you bury them in anything, it just doesn't get rid of them. I'll have to rethink that one. Um... I haven't watched WWE for like six months, but I just recently started watching again. Um, not a lot's really changed so much. Um, they still have the, the few storylines that you're interested in checking out, and then like the other, other half of the show is kind of pretty much shit for the most part. Um, it's, I like that they brought Brock Lesnar back. I'm interested in him and Cena like having a feud, and it's awesome seeing Lesnar destroy Cena the last couple weeks. Um, I like the Jericho Punk storyline. You know, when Jericho first came back and he was, like, you know, doing the whole trolling thing or whatever that is, whatever trolling means. Hey, I want you guys in this description box to tell me what trolling means. It's probably some Twitter-ish word, which I don't have a Twitter, so I don't know. But, um, yeah, tell me what it means. But when he first came, when Jericho first came back, I didn't really care for, like, you know, really what he was doing, but... Now that he's kind of got this feud going with Punk and, like, you know, it's involving him forcing him to drink alcohol, it's kind of interesting. And it's been pretty good. So, that's kind of another reason I've been watching Raw lately. Um, and it might sound pathetic, but, like, you know how um, Lord Tensai, a.k.a. A-Train Albert, has, has returned? Um, I'm actually interested in what they do with him. And I'm not a hardcore A-Train fan or anything, but... The one thing I hate about his return is that the commentators, like, don't recognize... Well, they're not allowed to recognize who he used to be, you know? They said, like, on his debut, it's like, I understand it's a former WWE wrestler that's been, you know, trading in Japan, blah, blah, blah. And then, um... It's like they don't, re like, acknowledge that, you know, it's A-Train, you know? He worked, you know, it's A-Train. He used to, you know, he was real dominant back then, but now that he's worked in Japan, you know, who's gonna stop him? 
You know what I'm saying? They really should, like, you know, just acknowledge that it's A-Train, but that he's different now. Like, well, different, but he's different now. He, he's more focused, you know, he's more dangerous or something. That's what they should do with them instead of just acting like, you know, it's someone different. You know what I, you know what I mean? I, I don't get it, so... I'm kind of based off what I've been watching. Like, that's kind of the, the good half of Raw. Then the second half of Raw is still pretty much shit. Um, they still have the occasional guest host show up. They had, like, the Three Stooges on last night. And it's like, you know, I understand that, you know, movie companies and all that have to remake classics. Not vintage, but classics. They have to remake, like, these classics whatever back in the day because there's, like, no creativity, you know, to make something different. So they try to redo something to make it cool again or something, you know. But I just think the Three Stooges thing doesn't work at all for me, you know. I have, like, a bunch of, like, Three Stooges DVDs, like, you know, on this bookshelf back here. And um, I love the original Three Stooges. Hilarious stuff. But it's like, you know, three guys... Like, when you watch Raw, it's like you got the three actors who are, like, pretty much acting like the Three Stooges. Like, just pretty much, like, taking on their persona. To me, it suggests more of, like, a psychological disorder than, like, um, you know... I don't know. It just doesn't make any sense to me. And then Santino being involved in it, I just I thought it was kind of stupid. So, and then you got Jack Swagger and Dolph Ziggler. Two good wrestlers, but they have not done shit with them. WWE has not pushed these guys, and it makes me upset because they were pushing Ziggler, and it's like, you know, they had him lose to Randy Orton, and now it's like he can't be possibly a main eventer again. They have him known as the, the show-off Dolph Ziggler. So they pretty much reverted him back to his old freaking um, Spirit Squad gimmick. You know what I mean? It's it's stupid. And then Jack Swagger just, you know, for some reason they can't push him either. And the guy's a good wrestler. I, I really don't get why these two guys aren't, like, main eventing or, you know, occasionally main eventing. You know you know what I mean? It's It makes no sense. Like, these guys are fighting for the U.S. title. Ziggler had the U.S. title. You know, it's time for him to move on. Swagger's a former world champion. Why hasn't he been going back for that belt? Even if these guys don't win the belt, I still want them to compete for it. I mean, you know what I'm, you know what I mean? It's just like, why are these guys just stuck like in the mid card? And they got Vicky Guerrero, who's just awesome, like on the microphone. She can get a crowd to boo her like in five seconds. You know, it just doesn't make any sense why they don't do anything with these two guys. So, um, trying to think who else wrestled last night on Raw. That's a sad thing. They only had, like, two-minute matches as usual. They didn't even give us, like, one good match. Like, last week, they gave us Punk versus Mark Henry, which was good. They really didn't give us any good matches this week. Del Rio squash Zack Ryder. It's the usual. It's like they just kind of show that Alberto Del Rio's still around or something. I know he's on SmackDown feuding with Sheamus, I guess, for the belt, or he's gonna be, but I don't know. It's just this. It's the same thing, though. It's the same shit. It's like they don't you know, push people, and it's just, you really just don't want to follow it, because what's there to follow, you know, they have the, like, I'm probably only going to be watching for, like, a while, so, probably just as long as Lesnar's around, and, like, I think Rock's supposed to, he allegedly signed a one-year deal, so, man, I love it when you're doing a video, and then your battery dies, Flip camera. Here's two flips for you, camera. So anyway, um, I haven't really watched TNA in a while. I've got I've got like a bunch of the episodes DVR, and I just have to watch them. I haven't watched it in a couple of months, mostly because uh, you guys remember Classic, you know the guy that used to run this channel until I, you know, beat the crap out of him and destroyed him. Well, he's still alive. Anyway, um, he uh, he's a like he was a nursing student, and he's been like you know studying for these tests and whatnot. So, I have actually been helping him out. That's why I really haven't been around. Mostly because if he goes off, you know, into the nursing world or whatever, then I will permanently control this channel. It's win-win to get rid of him. So, I've been helping him study. And uh, we sort of made, like, a, a bet with uh, God, basically saying that, um, you know, we will sacrifice a few of our little thing joys in life so that, you know, for the greater good. The great good, obviously, being passing his test. One of them was Impact. We sacrificed Impact for a week. 
Uh, we're sacrificing pop drinking for a month, uh, frozen pizzas for a month, uh, 50 bucks to charity. I think that's pretty much kind of what we sacrificed. But um, anyway, um, so he's been doing that, so I haven't really watched Impact. And uh, I'm going to catch up on it up to Friday once the whole week not week of not catching up on Impact is over with. So, because I'm a TNA fan. So, uh, until then, I'll have to catch up on it and let you guys know what I think of the product. So, because I really haven't followed it. Um, one little, one more little argument that I want to push. I really hate on YouTube nowadays, like, whenever you watch a video, you have to, like, like at least a, new, a newer video, you have to, like, watch the stupid advertisement before you can watch the video. Anyway, one particular uh, little bitch I want to pick on is uh, her name's Jada Grace, and she's got a song, Give Me My Money. Once again, this is pure trash music, you know? Some let's let's endorse this little kid so she can make shitty music, you know, because that's it's all America is anymore. It's all about shitty music, you know, no creativity to make good music. So, and what a great song! Give me my money. Hey, little ten-year-old kid, why don't you actually fucking do some housework and earn an allowance to make money, or find some sort of a job to make money, you know? Why should I give you my money? I fucking work for my money. You should work for yours too, bitch. So, anyway, that's my little rant on that, bitch. But, anyway, I'll show you guys an example. Here's, you know, I'm not showing you guys Give Me My Money because it's a stupid song. I've never listened to it, but it's probably stupid. So, typical Americana piece of shit music versus... Which one's the better music? Piece of shit music or excellence and greatness? You guys decide. Anyway, that's my little rants. I'm back. Crazy Pretzel is back, hopefully on a weekly basis. Um, probably I'll start reviewing TNA more than WWE once I catch up with it, but I still may, re re may review WWE. Talk about stuff in life that makes me angry, um, trends, and whatnot. Uh, wait, I don't talk about trends. That's Twitter. I don't know. Um, one final question for anybody that plays video games. So I've got this game called Suikoden for PlayStation. Um, are there, like, any characters that you would, like, automatically recommend playing, like, in your groups? Because there's, like, so many characters that I'm going to get, and I really don't know, like, who I should play, you know? Who's, like, the strongest or the best to put in your group? If you've actually played this game and have any advice for me, I would totally appreciate it. So, anyway, I'm Crazy Pretzel, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.